I'm a friend. I'm in uh, Amsterdam airport and I'm going to Minsk, uh, to Belarus. I will go uh, all the way from Amsterdam to uh, the Chernobyl uh, radiation zone. So I took a Geiger counter. Uh, this is the background radiation 009 microsieverts uh, per hour. Uh, and I will uh, make updates uh, during all the travel. Uh, so Minsk is Minsk is here. One flight, 12 o'clock from Amsterdam. You see, there's a second flight uh, the same day. Uh, so it seems from Amsterdam, Minsk is a popular destination. Two flights per day. Not many flights uh, today, uh, as we are at the end of the Corona uh, period. Uh, the airport is uh, quite empty. I was going through all the check, uh, security check, and uh, yeah, boarding first, a boarding pass, security, uh, customs maybe in five minutes. Five minutes, no queue. Uh, really a pleasure to travel now. So I'm boarded uh, with uh, Bellavia. I uh, don't know if you see. Uh, plane is full and it's a uh, two and a half hours uh, flight. Uh, I'm looking forward to uh, land in Minsk, of course.
in uh, Minsk. Uh, and now I need to. Uh, I took the wrong way here. I need to go to pick up my friend uh, in the south. Have a check of the counting, but when I arrived here uh, on the airport, uh, it was just back to normal uh, background radiation, not higher than in Amsterdam, uh, just a 0 0.01, uh, uh, 0.1 microsievert per hour. That's uh, the direction of Babruisk, Gomel. We're heading to the south. The other road was uh, Magilov. Magilov. It is warm weather, really summer. Huh? Nice. Better than uh, when you come in the winter and all is icy or snowy. Uh, yes. Take the way to Rechitsa. Pablo is straight and Gomel on the motorway continues there. I will be in Gomel tomorrow. So I'm driving here in the uh, Gomelskaya. Oblast and I wanted to stop just to show you this place uh, it is mentioning a Bagration. Bagration was in fact the, uh, like a D-Day in uh, France in Normandy for the Allies for the Western Allies here at uh, Operation Bagration uh, the Soviet army, the Red Army, uh, launched its counter-attack and uh, had a lot of success by reconquering uh, Belarus, Belarus. Yeah. This is a Kurgan Slavi, a uh, hill of the winners. The and on the road to here, uh, it is still normal background radiation. Uh, I don't know if you see, it's 0 0.11. Sometimes on the road uh, there were, it went um, up to 0 0.20 uh, and that was at places uh, maybe where there was a river or uh, yes, a bit more radioactivity uh, and I think that's uh, because of Chernobyl. Driving to uh, Kolya. Uh, yes, we'll, to meet Kolya. We hope we can meet uh, Kolya. Uh, we will do some shopping before in Navietka. We are on the road uh, to Goma. I have still my Geiger counter here, and it's well here near Goma. It's still the normal background radiation from what 13. 0, 4, 13, 0, 14 microsievert uh, per hour. So nothing special uh, for the moment. Sometimes, yes, it goes up twice until 20, 0, 25, but nothing really uh, exceptional. So we are here. Next to Gommel, uh, Gommel just the city is just the other side of the road, and here are the forests. Uh, there are still radioactivity in this forest, uh, radio isotopes, and you are not allowed to take uh, mushrooms and berries only with control, radioactivity control. 
I have my Geiger counter. Uh, it is low uh, radiation level here. Now it's 008, 009 microsievert. So not, no problem to walk here. But uh, be careful with uh, with mushrooms and uh, and berries. The city Gomel has 500,000 uh, inhabitants. Maybe this uh, neighborhood just the other side of the street. It's uh, there are tens of thousands, uh, many blocks, uh, Soviet blocks. We stopped here at a place near the ri river Soj, near Vietka, and uh, there's an old manor, an estate, with a uh, yeah, war memorial. Nice manor here. Yeah. And I am also measuring the radiation level it is at 0 0.28 0 0.30 so two to three times uh, normal uh, level complex bivshi usadby 19th century it's a complex of an old manor Let's see if we can go inside. Oh, it's close. Yeah, close. But Shall we go around? Please, look. This is uh, Greek style today, yes. built with Greek style. So maybe before from what, from a boyar in Russian Tsarist times? Uh, in the 19th century. 19th century, so from the Russian Empire. Ah, here also a rotonda with a terrace. Two level. Yes, the, the boyar who built this was rich uh, in those times, 19th century. Let's see the river here. There's the river. And there is ir the irradiated zone, uh, the forest behind Vietka. Uh, in fact, what happened was uh, after Chernobyl, the few days after Chernobyl, it seems there were uh, planes with uh, cloud seeding who, did, uh, who made it rain. Who made it rain on uh, less dense, denser uh, regions, so that the rain would not fall on the cities. But so all the people living in uh, near the forest here, uh, they got a lot more radiation than if they didn't do that. They were condemned those villages to be uh, completely radioactive. Nice place. There's also a nice home with brick. So this 
especially what's interesting here in this street is the nest we see with many storks with a family of storks there are many of those nests in the villages or in the countryside of Belarus look uh, we see what three storks and these are the young storks the, the parents are not in the nest huh? So this is the radiation zone. We're going to cross here, uh, have a rest, a stop, and go there to the right uh, to see if we can meet uh, Kolya. It is warm weather, it's 30 degrees uh, Celsius now. So we are driving in the radiation zone. What is the level now? Uh, can you see? 31? Yes, 31. So it's uh, three times higher yeah, than uh, normally. So I'm here in Novie Gromike. Gromiki, Gromiki. Uh, for those who watch videos of uh, Balden Bankrupt or The Last Traveler, you will recognize here there's uh, the war memorial. I have also my Geiger counter here on the roads. It's normal radiation uh, level. It's uh, 14, 0, 014 microsievert per hour. When we came here by car, on the road, sometimes it uh, went up until, uh, well, 0 30, but not much more. So we will see how it changes. Oh, should be careful of the holes. A lot of flies and bees and wasps, butterflies here. Zero twenty-five, so it was zero ten, zero eleven on the road. Here it's a bit higher. Zero twenty-seven, twenty-eight. And this is the memorial. Uh, yeah, Bald already showed how much Gromike. It's the village of all the Gromike. Uh, family, all family of Andrei Gromike, who was uh, Minister of Foreign Affairs uh, with Brezhnev. Yefremov, Kondrikov. Kravtsov, Kavalyov, Kavalyev, Tkatchev, Tereshenko, Komchenko, Raslikov, Rabikov. Yeah. So you can come here by car. We were stopped by, uh, by policemen who asked us what we wanted to do. He said it's not allowed to go here. But if we go to the war memorial, it's okay. So, of course, that's what we are doing. Uh, I will look for a few other places if there are uh, houses, of course, at the other side of the village there. Ah, here. We are already at 39. 40. Zero 040, that means there is still radioactive fallout here on the floor that has not been uh, washed away. So maybe some cesium, strontium on the floor or in the, on the walls here. And the village is in fact barely uh, recognizable. Uh, you have 
a T cross here, uh, intersection, T intersection. This was a central place of the villa, surely. One street, another street there. And here are the houses. Here's 36 microsieverts per hour. And I wonder, uh, it looks like, uh, okay, these are all bricks and it looks like they have been taken for uh, other, by people from the surroundings for uh, building other houses as building materials. Thirty-three, It would be interesting to come here with uh, an old uh, villager who lived here and who could indicate how it was, who could guide you. So maybe I can explain you also, uh, how does it work, a Geiger counter. Geiger counter, there's, it's a tube uh, which attracts uh, the electrons. Electrons which are liberated through ionizing the gas inside the tube. The gas is uh, generally argon or neon and when a gamma ray comes from the sky or from a uh, radioactive uh, yeah, isotope, radioisotope, uh, it will hit an uh, argon atom, an atom in the tube and liberate an electron. And that electron is, uh, yes, it will go to the, the wall of the tube and create an avalanche and it's detectable uh, electronic signal. That's what you hear um, in the Geiger counter. The name of the song? Ah, the name of the song. Uh, a Bielý Lebit na Prudu. A Bielý Lebit na Prudu. A Bielý Lebit. Oh, we are at the road now, so here we need to go what, straight or left? I don't know. Left. Okay, okay. Ah, I, maybe I think uh, left. To the left. Yes, I think left. Kolya! Stalin! Kolya, Kolya! Kolya, здравствуйте! Здравствуйте! Мы встречаемся... Uh, Месяц назад! Месяц назад! Uh, Ой, Господи! Да, в Ляда! В Ляда! В Ляда! Да, 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 в Ляда! Да, да, да! Не! А у царю царство небесное! У Гали! Восемь! Восемь? Да, а первая умерла. Шесть сынов и две дочки. А кто такая Галя? А, уже тоже с матерью там лежит. А. Она... Сестра ваша? Да. А, тоже сестра. Та, старшая, старшая у меня а. на три года. А. А. Коля, а где это кладбище, в какой стороне показывали вас? Какой вы стороне? Вы туда ходите, да? Да. Угу. На Радуницу, да? <coughs> Обязательно. Ясно. Я вот хожу, угу. не бляхавший. 
Придумал. Ну что? Постоите там. Шустрый, угу. когда оборудок. Угу. Я пойду. Седором были мы. С, э, с, э, с Англии, который? Ну, это, что Эдгар. Vasilki. This is the national flower of Belarus. Vasilki. So the journey is over. Uh, I traveled all the way from Amsterdam, to, taking the plane uh, to Minsk and uh, picking up my friend at, uh, in Svetlogorsk and then heading towards uh, Kolya. Uh, what we saw was that radiation levels were about the same uh, in the Netherlands or in uh, Belarus, uh, even uh, near the uh, forest, uh, in the forest, it was two times higher, at Kolya also two times higher uh, than uh, normal. Uh, here, Svetlogorsk is 0, 10 uh, microsievert uh, per hour. Uh, so what we can say is uh, it is normally uh, safe to walk what you should care of is uh, there are still uh, radio isotopes with long uh, decay uh, lifetime uh, that you should not ingest when you ingest them uh, they will stay in your body uh, and they will have a bad impact on your uh, bones or on your cells uh, that's what is dangerous also what i discovered is Outside, it is background radiation 0 12 microsievert per hour. Uh, but when we went, when I went up in this building, uh, it's a Khrushchevska uh, that was built in the 60s here. Uh, the closer you come, when you go, go into the staircase, the closer you come to the ceiling, to the roof, uh, the radiation level became higher. It went up uh, at the highest floor, so the fifth floor, just under the roof to zero uh, 30. It could go up to zero 30 microsievert per hour. And I suspect that it's because uh, after Chernobyl, uh, the few days after Chernobyl, some uh, particles landed on the roof. Uh, the roof is uh, flat. Uh, so uh, it was not washed away and it stayed there for long times uh, the, there was after that re reparations on the roof the radio isotopes are trapped and through infiltration of the water inside the building in a, through the walls uh, because there is infiltration on the last floor uh, well, those uh, radioisotopes get stuck in, in the wall. Uh, so that's uh, what I suspect. If you know about this, uh, please comment below, uh, because uh, I would like to know what we can do for that. Um, so I thank you for your interest. I hope it was interesting for you. Uh, we met Kalia. I. We thought it would be better, better to have a channel dedicated to Kolya. So the footage we took uh, with Kolya, very interesting stories we put on his channel, on that channel. Uh, that channel is open for any volunteer that w would like to help Kolya. Uh, and I will put the link uh, down in the, uh, in the description of this video. Uh, and rest me to tell, say you uh, Dania. Uh, see you next time.